our next speaker is Friedrich Müllen. Friedrich has been documenting factory farms for almost 25 years now, and he is the founder of the animal rights organization Soko Tierschutz. The philosophy of the organization is to battle the animal industry through research and, and investigation, close cooperation with the media, and changing consumer behavior. And today, Friedrich is going to talk about whistleblower and the downer cow mafia, showing Soko Tierschutz investigation and discovery of the networks of a criminal organization coordinating the cruel transport and illegal killing of so-called downer cows. So welcome, Friedrich, and yeah, enjoy the talk. <laughs> So the downer cow industry, whistleblowers and um, how to close down six slaughterhouses in two years. Um, long title and there's always a, already an error in this title because um, since the uh, day before yesterday, now it's seven slaughterhouses, but it's three years. So um, already a good change. So yeah, um, I do this for a very long time and one of the biggest problems in this time was always cows. Because um, we in Germany, um, Germany is stuffed with farms with cows. Um, milk drinking is nearly that important like drinking beer. Um, so it's, it's very difficult to work on this topic. And I already struggled a lot to do this because um, I'm from Bavaria and the most people from Bavaria, and I think it's the same in the other parts of Germany, know how cows are kept. The cow farms are everywhere. You even see them chained. The doors are open. They show how miserable the, uh, the farming is um, and the people got used to it. So the people don't care a lot. And this was always a big problem because how to approach the people if the people say, okay, so what? this is how cow farming works. So just filming the conditions in the farms, even so they are bad, like with the chain uh, keeping system of cows was not the best, best option. On the other side, Germany is one of the biggest um, dairy producers in the world. We are number four in the world. Um, this is uh, tremendous. If you look at the size of Germany on the map and uh, with competitors like China or US, um, Germany's dairy production is huge. Farms everywhere, as I said, and uh, the whole European Union um, has four of the biggest dairy producers in the world. So the, uh, not only Germany, but the whole European Union is a very difficult uh, uh, part in this problem and of course the industry is struggling a lot to fight back if you try to fight the suffering of the cows. So we looked for an angle and the angle came with a word downer cows. I think the most people know what downer cows are. A little trigger warning um, in this um, uh, lecture, I will show some photographs of downer cows and stuff connected with it. Um, so be aware of this and uh, later on I will show a video. Um, I will give you a warning before and I will say now we proceed if it's over. So uh, the most people watching this are vegans and not everybody wants to be confronted with this. So downer cows. Downer cows are cows that uh, can't move anymore. Um, by specific reasons. So um, I show a photograph here. So here we see a downer cow. Um, this is a situation happening, happening every day. This cow uh, can be sick, this cow can be wounded, it can be after birth um, happening, and it's um, often it's a mixture of all these problems the cows can't move anymore. And when we were looking for an angle, we already saw downer cows may be an option. It's um, obviously a horrible point of this industry on so many. Um, but uh, suddenly a few years ago, we got a phone call and the person on the phone um, spoke about something he called corpse taxis. He said that there is a network of companies in Germany, animal transport companies, they call themselves corpse taxis because they transport cows that are more dead than alive, wounded, with broken legs, severely sick, dying. 
Um, honestly, I wasn't aware of this. I knew that this can happen. I know that uh, know that downer cows can happen, but I wasn't aware that there is a business model behind it. So now I would like to show the video that was the outcome of this phone call. So be uh, on alert. This is a very cruel video. You see these animals are not able to move. Halves that was thrown down. And this was happening all the day to hundreds of animals. Massive use of electric rods. So here we proceed um, after the video. So this uh, whistleblower informed us about this and we began following these trucks. We found out that these are not the huge cattle trailers um, uh, and trucks, that this, um, we found out that this is done with small um, transporters, like for example, this one I will show. So these little trailers, um, you see them on the road all the day and you have no idea what's behind it. Uh, it could be a healthy horse, it could be a normal animal transport, but very often they are used um, as, as they call it, corpse taxis. So uh, we investigated uh, this, we followed these trucks and uh, we found a slaughterhouse in Bad Iburg. It's a small city in Nasa Saxia in northern Germany and um, I think I would never um, found out about this slaughterhouse. Um, it's very small. Um, it's not from one of the big companies. So it's not likely that um, we would discover it um, without this uh, intelligence we received from the whistleblower. So this slaughterhouse was just for killing sick and dying cows. This is illegal, not only in Germany, but in the whole European Union. So you're not allowed to slaughter these animals. But of course, it's a matter of high profit. The farmers want to get rid of the animals because uh, to have a dying animal on the farm is a risk. If the veterinarians are coming or something else, um, you want to get rid of these animals. And so they sell these animals at very low prices we were able to achieve a lot of documents from a dumpster there. And here you can see these documents. You can see that it's saying what kind of animal it is, cow or calf. You can see the animal number and you can see the price tag, 32 euros, 46 euros, 44 euros, 200 euros, but for a whole cow. And here they say what kind of damage the animal has. So here two broken legs or here a damage at the legs again and broken leg again. So this was a systematic business. It was not like, okay, on one day, this animal will arrive one time a year. It happened on daily basis, every week, every month, the same. It was interesting that uh, the whistleblower told us that the farmers sometimes even force the slaughterhouses to take these animals and they say, if you don't take my sick animals, um, you won't get the healthy ones, the expensive ones. So it's, uh, it's, you can say that the slaughterhouse is the most criminal part of it. Of course, it's the obvious criminal part, but the farmers take place heavily. So um, this slaughterhouse um, had a 24 hour observation for one month. And after one month, we published this footage and uh, the police raided the place and closed it down. So was this the end of the downer cows story? No, because um, suddenly this was such a big story in the German media. A lot of people in the industry learned that uh, there is a potential wealth for all the horrors they see. And so more and more whistleblowers contacted us. And um, for example, um, we got a phone call to say, let's have a look to this slaughterhouse in Düdenbüttel. You know, these people have a heart in their body. 
they may look um, strong doing this work, like driving the trucks or slaughtering and all of this. But if they see these horrors all the time, it makes something with them. And so a lot of these people are suffering too. And yeah, they now saw, okay, they closed down this hellhole in Bad Iburg. So what about the other places? Because I always say it's something like cancer. If you fight one point at the cancer, uh, the core, then uh, you have this metastase, uh, metastasis, I don't know what it is in English, and it's was the same with the downer cow mafia. In the moment but Eborg fell, others took over because the profit was so high. So Düdenbüttel was an interesting case um, because there um, we couldn't see a lot. Um, in uh, Bad Iburg, it was quite easy um, to achieve to get the footage, but at Düdenbüttel, again, a small slaughterhouse, not really a, a place where you think that a lot of things are happening, um, but uh, from the outside you could see nothing um, because the trucks always went nearly into the building, so you couldn't couldn't see anything. So what some people um, decided was a new step in doing investigations. So if you don't see something at the slaughterhouse, let's follow them to the farm. So why not using hidden cameras? on trucks to see what is happening from the moment on the truck is moving. So this was a fascinating a new chance because it's very, very difficult to follow these small trailers truck, um, on countryside roads because they often see, okay, somebody's following, but if a very small hidden camera is following, yeah, you see all the details. So this was the reason why it was possible to get this tremendous footage um, where you saw the animals before where the cow is dragged into the trailer from very close up and shocked a lot of people. So um, after Düdenbüttel, we uh, achieved the, uh, to get the footage, we published the footage, the police closed the slaughterhouse down. The same case was Hohengören, another little, we call it now slaughter garage. Um, it was nothing more than two or three garages, and uh, there they slaughtered a lot of animals. It was a big network, not only selling the meat to Germany, but to Belgium, to the Netherlands, to Sweden. So it was very big, and uh, it's a big business. Um, yeah, so Hohen Göring, exactly the same. It was not difficult to get the footage. Um, horrible conditions, slaughterhouse closed down. And so we created what I call a boom of whistleblowers. And this is pretty unique with Soko Tierschutz because other organizations don't have this. I asked around and uh, asked, is this the same with you that every day people call and give information? Some have this uh, sometimes, but uh, we have really, uh, yeah, a boom of this. And a lot of people are calling us, writing letters. And I would like to explain how you can achieve the same because it's such a great advantage. Normally you have to look around, you have to um, research a lot, um, but now we get a mail with all the documents, with videos, with photos um, from people from the meat industry directly. So why are the people doing this? I already explained some can't handle it anymore. A lot of these phone calls begin with it's useless to talk with the veterinarians. I can't see this anymore. Please stop this place. So here it's clear, even these people, they have a heart. On the other side, of course, some want revenge. Um, they uh, were treated not well enough by the people or have financial problems with the company. And of course, they look for somebody um, to get them into trouble. But if the people, uh, if the animals are winning by this, why not? It's very important to have a very good and reliable communication um, because these people, they collect their bravery for a long time until they have enough to make the phone call. And if then the person is uh, being confronted with the answering machine, it's over. This person won't call again. So we established a 24 seven hotline for whistleblowers um, where the people are clear, where the people have the clear knowledge that responsible, well-known people of us are answering the phone. Most time I do it myself. 
and they want to speak with somebody they know. They know me from TV, so they ask, oh, may I speak to Friedrich? I want to talk with this guy. So it's important to have a good connection all the time, um, to have a reliable person and to act swiftly. In one case, somebody called me and said, do you want to see a slaughterhouse? But you have to start now and go to the slaughterhouse house. I will show you around. Of course, I had some thoughts about, is this a trap or whatever? But I went there and that was the beginning of a very good relationship with this whistleblower. And they deliver more and more information if they see that we are trustworthy and that we act if we get information. So swift action, good contact, and reliability, that's important. And at best, we have to meet with the people directly, have a personal connection to them, because it's very hard for them to trust us. They know that we are fighting to end their industry. What kind of gap is it um, to contact us? So what is if you don't have these sources, you don't have this info? Um, I want to show one photograph again. To be clear, the downer cow problem is not a problem of Germany alone. It's a problem of every country with dairy industry. If it is a small organic dairy farm or a huge factory farm dairy farm, all have the same problem. In all of these farms, animals get sick, animals get wounded um, and get downer cows. And so if you see a trailer like this and you see this little box, you know that this trailer um, work with, uh, with a winch system. So something like this. And if you see a trailer like this with this winch system, you know they are dragging cows into this trailer. It's uh, unbelievable that a lot of these trailers have this feature. For what? For loading wood? No, for loading animals that can't walk. On the other, um, another detail you can look for. Um, yeah, this always takes some time. Is if you see a slaughterhouse like this here, this is Dudenbüttel slaughterhouse, uh, I think fourth one we, uh, we closed down. Here you see a normal animal truck and you see this loading bay thing they put down and the animals walk down here. This is normal. But if you see the same picture and you see one of, one of these small trailers directly driving nearly into the slaughterhouse, this is a very good proof that these animals don't walk in because there's not even the space to put this, uh, this um, loading gear. So this, uh, in this case, it was one of the points where people said, okay, here is something wrong. So this is one detail you can look after. So uh, the uh, public reaction to this focus on the downer cow issue was huge. Um, we finally had the chance to really work on the topic cows. We finally had the chance to work, to talk about the whole dairy uh, issue. We had TV reports, even in public television saying, um, yeah, here we had the bloody milk business, or is um, milk the, uh, really blood, whatever, really hard, tough titles, and a lot of reaction um, in social media, extreme, uh, a lot of uh, reactions. So this worked very fine, and I think um, if you have the chance to do this in your own country, have a try. It's very important to fight for these cows, um, the problem at the moment is that now it's changed a little bit to the farms. Some uh, farmers are not um, willing uh, to take the risk anymore to transport the animals. So they have the animals in the farms just laying around as down a cow, as seen here. So this is, of course, we can't solve everything at the same time. But the first step is to disrupt this network of illegal slaughterhouses, then to focus on the farms, to follow back to the farms doing this. And now, for example, we made a call to all our volunteers to have a look for downer cows just at the farm. And we give, get notice nearly every day about downer cows anywhere, somewhere in Germany. 
and we make complaints to the police and to the authorities. And that is a very good and effective way to fight the industry and shows everybody what is the real face of the dairy industry from the small organic farm to the huge factory farm. So have a try, uh, join the hunt for the downer cow mafia. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you Friedrich for this interesting talk and your insights into your work and uh, into your investigations. Um, we have still time for questions. So I will read out the question to you and then you can just answer it. Thank you. Um, the first question would be, how do you get the message out about your work so that whistleblowers know whom to address and how? Mm. Yeah, that's, uh, we have a lot of TV reports and we had a lot of TV reports before this. Um, so if you are a lot in the media and especially if you have a constant face in the media, I'm the uh, press face of uh, Soko Tierschutz, the people see there is a person who can be approached. There is not, nothing like a person hiding, there's a person doing this openly. And so they feel they create trust in you and they contact you. I don't know 100% how it works, but it works. Okay, perfect. That sounds good. Um, the next question is, uh, dear Friedrich, a lot of respect for the work that you're doing for the animals and being on call all the time for them. How are you, re re how are you researching out, uh, reaching out to other organizations in other countries or to politi politicians caring about animals about this issue? Ooh. Um, yeah, yeah it's, it's not, uh, um, our, our most work is not political lobbying. We think that we have to sort this out in, in a grassroots manner to change the minds of the people and on the other side to make it as difficult as possible for this industry um, to do um, the animal exploitation. Um, so um, we don't contact politicians a lot. They have to, they contact us um, if the story is big enough. Um, uh, the more important thing is to work together with other organizations in Poland or in Austria and in France. And so we try to have contacts to these organizations. Normally the International Animal Rights Conference would be a very good place to do networking like this and to meet uh, friends from abroad. This year it's a little bit difficult, but I only can encourage uh, other people to work together. And this speech, I, I thought about speaking about vivisection. We had a big success there, but I think it's so important to find weak points of the industry. And I think the downer cow issue is one of the weakest points of the dairy industry. And I would be very happy if other organizations work on this and we will support them as good as possible with our knowledge. Okay, thank you. Uh, then there is another question. At first, they also thank you for your presentation and uh, say that they are also making similar experience in Poland with the downer cows. And the question is, how do you deal with threats that I'm sure you receive and how do you take care about your own safety? Um, yeah, I don't know this with the threats. It's, um, I don't get a lot of uh, stuff like this. Sometimes some pharma kids call and make the phone jokes or whatever, but um, I think it's okay. Um, uh, so these typical murder threats or whatever, I knock on wood, um, but it doesn't happen. Um, in my whole 27 years uh, work as an animal rights activist, I had two phone calls of people say, you should die. Um, I can handle this. Um, so, but uh, it's important to be careful um, just because you're not struck by uh, um, by thunder, uh, by, by flash, thunder, uh, whatever, thunderbolt. <laughs> um, it doesn't mean that you're not in danger. Everybody who is doing investigations is a potential target of retaliation. And so I'm very careful about where I'm living, about what I'm talking, who I'm talking to. And um, I like to have a lot of video surveillance around me that I can see who is standing in front of my door. Okay, thank you. Um, then there's one more question. Yeah, we still have time for that, I think. Um, how precisely can we act in our countries? So I think how you can start something like you or something like that. 
depends on the country, um, but if it is a country with dairy industry, it's always the same pattern. First, you look for animal transport companies, um, especially the smaller ones are involved in this business. If they have a lot of this, or maybe only two of these little trailers I showed, um, then they are potential targets. So the one option is um, to follow them and to observe them. The other option is to observe small and middle style slaughterhouses and to look what they are doing. As I explained, if you observe them for a time, you see what is happening. Are all the animals walking down or are sometimes the trailers go into the slaughterhouse by some reason um, and stuff like this. So um, gather information, get maybe in touch with us, we can help with this. And um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big issue in, in all countries with dairy industry. You will quickly find stuff and uh, it's quite likely, it's the same business model everywhere. If you can, they, these slaughterhouses pay 50 euros for an animal and can, can earn up to thousand animals for the same animal if they slaughtered it illegally, a sick one. So it's, it's very attractive and I, uh, it would be a wonder if it wouldn't happen in other countries. Okay, so actually everybody can start and do something like that. Yeah, just have a try and we do our best to help. Yeah, perfect. Um, then there's one more question. Are you being hacked or attacked online? Um, I knock on wood again. <laughs> um, not recently. Um, it's very common on Facebook that people think if Facebook fails another time that everybody was hacked. Um, so sometimes the people are a little bit over uh, uh, secure about this. Um, but um, it can happen. And it's the same with uh, the person with the baseball club in front of the door. Always be prepared. Always be careful. Um, but don't get panicked. Um, if you live in panic, you are doing errors and then it's getting worse. Um, I think um, we are doing this work and everybody knows it's a little bit of, uh, can be dangerous. Um, but if we are careful, um, we do our best that nothing happens. Okay, perfect. And I think we have one last question. Um, if you have videos or photographs about these Ill illegalities, do you put them on social media or do you take them to the police first? Um, we have a clear procedure on this. First, we check up everything um, uh, uh, in uh, different levels to see is it true, what can we investigate furthermore, how is the legal situation there and so on. Then we um, contact the authorities, we give it to the state prosecutor and then we publish it in the media. That's important because we have to give the state the chance to fight these people, these are criminals. And we had, um, yeah, we have a very good experience with this. There were dozens of raids against slaughterhouses and farms in the last years in Germany involving hundreds of policemen and state and a lot of other um, government personnel. So. Of course, the state is doing a lot of wrong things, but if we can cooperate, why we shouldn't? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think there are still questions coming in right now and we still have time. So um, there's one more question. How has this work affected your mental health? Uh, um, some people already from the beginning say I'm crazy or whatever, um, so it depends on the view. Um, but I think um, if you're part of the solution and not part of the problem, you can handle this. And especially I can handle this because I can see that we can find these people, we can trace them down and we can shut down their economic activity forever. And so I think if you're first, you're strong-minded, Second, you see that it works. And third, um, you, um, you live vegan and don't have a bloody problem at home with animal suffering. I think then you can handle it. But some people can't. I know good colleagues that um, grew carrots, organic carrots in Ireland now because they couldn't handle this. And yeah, I respect it. And sometimes I'm a little bit jealous. <laughs> yeah, sure. You always have to be careful. And yeah, okay, I think there's um, even more questions. Uh, 
is it even legal to put cameras on these trailers? Do you get in trouble with the police doing your work? And in what ways? Of course, I don't do this myself. Um, uh, who is doing this? We always don't comment our sources. Um, but um, the legal situation in Germany is very good regarding investigative uh, stuff like this. Um, there are high court decisions saying that the public interest, the supreme public interest of the, about this industry is higher than the interest of these companies on privacy. So it can, uh, it's quite free, um, uh, but it doesn't mean that you have a license to film everybody anywhere. Uh, everywhere. So you always have to, uh, in Germany we say with Augenmaß, I don't know what this is in English, um, but you, uh, you shouldn't use all measures you can at every case. Always look what kind of target you have, what kind of possibilities you have, uh, you need, and uh, act as careful and uh, with all legal aspects as possible. Okay, and one last question, I think that's um fast to answer. What was the name of the Downer Cows organization again? I'm not um, sure. uh, they, uh, they didn't really had a name. Uh, they called it Corpse Taxis. That means uh, on uh, in German Kadaver Taxis, what means uh, yeah, something that is um, transporting nearly dying stuff or dead animals. Um, so they didn't really had a network name, but it is an obvious network from butcher stores to slaughterhouses to private farms and animal transport corporations. And the fight is not over. We still have a list from whistleblowers. Even in the last days, we got more intel about new um, parts of this cancer in the industry, and we will try to stop them. Thank you.